Okie dokie. This is a tune file from a 2008 GMC Acadia that I found in the repository. Uh, it has the 3.6 liter 6 cylinder in it. If yours is a V8, the concept should still transfer over. Finding fuel mileage, you might be able to find a few miles per gallon by adjusting down the idle to say 550 or so. Not really sure how much gain that will give you, but it's something to try. Uh, airflow for fuel tuning, this is where you'll find your uh, dynamic airflow controls and your mass flow or your mass airflow calibration tables. We already discussed where to find your volumetric efficiency tables. Anything that you change in here to one of these tables, um, I would go ahead and make all of these tables match each other. Um, that way, whenever it does look up the uh, VE table, volumetric efficiency table, it'll always be looking at the same one. So there's no second guessing on which table to use. Now, um, in the stock calibration, they are both active at the same time up to a certain RPM. This RPM right here, above 2600, it uses the mass airflow only, which is normally the reason why if my fuel trims are way out, um, long-term and short-term fuel trims are way out, like say around 10%, I'll go ahead and disable this and I will apply the percentage change necessary to the math calibration and get those back in line and I find it drives just fine that way sometimes smoother than stock. Now notice this is a nice smooth curve you will need to keep that. Um, also this table over here, this 5800 hertz, is the same in both the high and low tables. You'll need to pay attention to that. Uh, if you do want to end up tuning the virtual volumetric efficiency, you will have to disable the math airflow, the mass airflow. That's done right here by changing this to zero. That's the high frequency fail and changing the relevant uh, DCT codes to fail on the first error. That way it'll be using the VE tables up here and you can apply your fueling changes here and you can get it to drive just fine using solely that or once you're done you can re-enable the math and continue on from there. Just know that there are two sections that control your fueling, mass airflow, and virtual volumetric efficiency. Now, as far as finding power, uh, do not mess with anything in here for drivability. See these things modify at your own risk down here? I say that for a reason. If you mess with these and it doesn't agree with the uh, throttle body that you have, it will break your ECU and you'll have a paperweight. Uh, Tuning your camshafts, there could be some fuel mileage to be found in here. Usually not. The stock uh, configuration is pretty good. So I would probably leave that alone. Where you'll find most of your horsepower and fuel economy is going to be here in the spark tables. Uh, we'll get to that in just a minute. Uh, closing this off, you don't have a supercharger, so you don't need that. All right, for fuel. Uh, stoichiometric. Um, in here, this is on a slope uh, for the stock configuration, and that uh, these percentages up here, that's percentage of ethanol. You do not have a flex fuel sensor enabled, so that doesn't mean anything to you as far as these percentages go, but the stoich in here does. Now, for regular gasoline that does not have any ethanol, 14.68 is uh, the storage for that. Um, if you're running 10% ethanol like we do here in the States, it'll be 14.1 or 14.09, give or take. Uh, if you're going to be running E85, it's somewhere around 8.9. Uh, but this right here, you'll set this storage for whatever fuel you plan to be running. So if it were here in the States, this is what I would set it at. What this does is allow your computer to correctly 
guess to make the amount of fuel to be injected by the air that it sees coming in. Um, this helps control and get in line your fuel trims, nothing else. Uh, if you were to set this to something crazy lean like that, this would not improve your fuel mileage. The only thing this would do is make it run poorly and have wildly out of control fuel trims. That's it. Okay, um, for your rev limiter, I've already gone ahead and made some changes in here for the rev limiter stock. It comes with ETC enabled. Go ahead and disable that and set the delay to something like 10 seconds or so. Um, and then enable your spark. Uh, and what this does is it turns it back into an old style RPM uh, or rev limiter. We're going to bam, 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 instead of just holding one steady RPM. And that will increase your potential for flames on the back end. Now, one thing you will not do is turn off the fuel cut. You have to leave this enabled. Otherwise, the engine will just run away and you won't have a rev limiter at all. Uh, if you wanted some backfire when you decelerate, uh, you can increase these numbers here. What this is, is at revolutions of the engine that the fuel injectors remain active after you lift your foot off of the throttle. Uh, you can increase these numbers here. That'll leave the fuel injectors open longer. Lower this number right here. I think it's 15 stock. Uh, you can lower that to zero. And then change your blend time from 100 down to zero so it immediately drops the spark down while leaving the fuel injectors on and it'll backfire all the way as long as the uh, fuel injectors are left open. Blah, 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 coming to a stop. Uh, it's cool to make noise, but it's probably bad for fuel economy. Uh, nothing really to change in here. Uh, let's see, power enrichment tables. I would leave these alone if I'm looking for um, for fuel economy, if you're looking for power, take the delays out. Um, and also, this is set really rich in certain places. Uh, 1.156 is leaner than stock, but plenty rich enough to be safe. I would set it for that. Um, that'll save a little bit of fuel when you do go wide open throttle and probably give you more power. Catalyst over temperature is enabled from the factory. I would disable it because I don't care nothing about my catalytic converters and whenever it does enrich at random times, it's just wasting fuel. Uh, we had already discussed making sure that your high and low octane tables match each other. Um, and as you can see here, I've made a change into this area of the table. This is normally your cruise range, uh, 1200 to 2200 RPM. You know, at light load and medium load, you can adjust these up or down, you know, a couple of degrees here and there. Make an experiment and always make sure, uh, always make sure to copy and paste your changes. There you go. Uh, nothing really to be found over here unless you're modified heavily. Uh, over here for your base, your burst knock retard, change this table all to zero and zero this table out here as well. What that does is keeps it from dropping to really low timing whenever you push a throttle down and you're trying to accelerate. Uh, on this table, I would just disable my ETC limit. That's going to give you a little bit better throttle response. And other than that, that's about all I would do. Uh, initially and then I would go test drive it and see where you need to go from there.